Or is intense welcome to CG Reaction and this is why America's Chernobyl might happen on this island by the channel Real Life Lore. Really? Chernobyl can happen again? Uh, Chernobyl happened because of a, a mistake. A simple mistake that they didn't thought of at the time. But for that all the nuclear plants were reinforced in some way or here and there. America's one of uh, nuclear plants might go to, uh, like Chernobyl, that's surprising. Remember people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the reaction update, there's a link in the description, check out the cast for all the playlists, check out the end cards, and yeah, let's watch this one. This video is made possible by Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Unfortunately, the world has had its fair share of nuclear disasters over the last half century. The Chernobyl disaster in Ukraine, Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, and Fukushima in Japan. But what few realize is that there is another great nuclear disaster brewing somewhere else in the world right now. And its location is so remote, it's no wonder that you've probably never heard of it before. 5,000 miles west of Los Angeles and 500 miles north of the equator lies a small island chain known as the Marshall Islands. For a uh, lot of us, these islands are better. Yeah, birthplace of Godzilla and uh, where the Castle Bravo bomb was detonated, I know that best known as the birthplace of the movie monster Godzilla, who was awakened and mutated from atomic bomb explosions at one of the many islands. And while, sadly, the islands never actually ended up spawning a terrifying lizard that breathes radioactive sadly. fire, in the real world, they may still be just as terrifying, if not even more so, in the very near future. The Marshall Islands are leftover remnants of ancient volcanoes that once protruded out from this region, and were first settled nearly 3,000 years ago by the ancestors of the present-day Marshallese. These people crossed the ocean by boat by way of Asia and Polynesia and lived a largely secluded and peaceful existence up until the mid-1940s. During World War II, the islands were ruled by the Japanese. That is surprising. Long ago, these people, uh, you know, traveled through Pacific like that with really, you know, weird wooden, you know, rickety boats. That was, uh, let's just say, you would not cross a small part of water, let alone, uh, you know, half of the Pacific Ocean or something. They did that, actually. That That is really courageous. Japanese until the United States showed up and took them over in 1944. And very quickly after that, the American presence on the islands increased dramatically. As the Cold War began, American officials were eager to find a location to test their growing atomic arsenal. And the vast, empty expanse of ocean in this region that is nearly five times the size of California seemed to be the ideal. God, I remember during the Cold War they started to, you know, uh, no wait a minute, before Cold War, this is the early times. Uh, before the you know World War II ended, I think this is the first time they were testing all these nuclear bombs. They were testing it on in, near Las Vegas in Nevada, and you could see images of people like walking around, just seeing like they're seeing some kind of spectacle or something. There's a ma massive mushroom cloud in the distance. You could clearly see it from Las Vegas, and people like eh, it's not, nothing wrong here. Nowadays, people would have a heart attack if they just see that. Even if they knew that that uh, you know that uh, shockwave is not going to touch them, still the radiation alone would give them heart attack. At the time, people were just walking around, and uh, uh, very later on they realized, oh wait a minute, it's not just the bomb. The radiation could be devastating too. And then pe people like, oh okay, let's let's keep it, let's make sure that it's way far away from people. But all those people who got introduced to that level of radiation, their DNA must have been changed, and even their you know childrens and childrens might be affected by that. That's just effed up. Full spot. In fact, during the years between 1946 and 1958, the United States detonated a total of 67 nuclear devices across these islands, leaving all sorts of extremely dangerous radioactive waste behind. The islands were even home to the largest thermonuclear bomb ever tested by the United States government, yeah, known so as Castle Bravo. This experimental nuclear device created a mushroom cloud four and a half miles tall, and even still today, this bomb ranks as the third largest man-made explosion ever, the equivalent of 15 megatons of TNT, making it a thousand times as powerful as the little boy atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. And after the explosion, it dropped radioactive ash across 7,000 square miles of the surrounding area in and around the Marshall Islands. The Marshallese themselves were not evacuated from their islands until three days after the bomb's detonation, and many would suffer from acute radiation sickness as a result. While Why? Three additional Why would the US do that? That was a controlled explosion, right? They, they knew they were doing. Wouldn't they realize that all those people might get affected by it? 
But at the time, they didn't they just didn't care. Like, yeah, it's far, it's away from the USA. Who cares? Is that what that was? Because that's just effed up, man. All members of a nearby Japanese fishing vessel were also con contaminated by the heavy fallout. The initial blast itself even vaporized the entire island where the bomb went off and created a crater 2,000 meters wide by 76 meters deep. The last nuclear bomb that the United States detonated on the island 2,000 meters wide? Damn, that's a big crater. ...was in 1958, and shortly thereafter, the world at large began to understand the implications of sustained above-ground nuclear testing. That is why, in 1963, a treaty was signed amongst most of the world's nations that banned nuclear weapons... <laughs> at first, they were dead on a bombs, and they were like, you know, all right, that was good enough, but not catching anyone, uh, anyone's attention. They're like, you know what, we could also make hydrogen bomb. These are really big, thousand times big. So they detonated this, Casa Bravo, then the Russian detonated Tsar Bomba, and they're like, okay, you know what? We, we literally destroyed islands. Now this is getting a bit too much. Too much radiation, let's, let's calm it down a bit. Testing in the atmosphere, outer space, and underwater, which still stands today. However, as far as the Marshall Islands were concerned, the damage had already been done. You see, all of this nuclear testing came at another long-term horrible price because it also left behind an incredible amount of hazardous radioactive waste. Yeah. The United States government knew that it had to do something to clean up its mess. And so in the 1970s, they decided to construct a giant tomb to house all of these radioactive debris in. And they built it here on one of the most isolated <laughs> islands in the whole chain called Run It. Oh God, they did not just do that. Tell me they did not just do that. This is literally gathering all the crap, putting it in one place and putting a lid on it. This is literally Really that. <laughs> the tomb was built over a big existing crater from a previous nuclear test and capped off with a massive concrete dome in order to seal the dangerous contents inside forever. The dome itself is 115 meters wide and 18 inches thick. And today, the tomb contains roughly 3.1 million cubic feet worth of nuclear waste inside, roughly the equivalent of 35 full Olympic-sized swimming pools. But it doesn't just contain all the nuclear waste that America generated on the Marshall Islands. The US government also had the gall to ship over oh, 130 shit. additional tons of radioactive soil and atomic debris left over from the nuclear test sites in Nevada here as well, and tossed all of that into the tomb to join the Marshall Island debris as well. The tomb on Runnet Island became one of America's largest storage sites for nuclear waste. And while it's located over 7,000... I'm not gonna lie, if I'm one of those people who lives on the Marshall Island, even if my parents, grandparents and all those people, you know, comes from there, is native from there, lived there, I would get the fuck out of there. I would take my whole family, get out of there, because no way I'm living close to that shit. Because, first of all, uh, you know, what if that thing leaks? I mean, they, they, literally most of the island is gone. They literally put the lid on top. They didn't create a whole square chamber or something. They just put the lid on top. What is some kind of a, some kind of a ge geological activity shift the ground a bit here and there, develops a crack and everything leaks out in the ocean? Are you kidding me? That's way too much radiation. I'm not touching that thousand miles away from Washington DC, it's only located 665 miles away from the Marshall Islands capital city, <laughs> Majuro. The construction effort of the tomb itself took three entire years to complete with the help of 4,000 US servicemen. During that construction, six men died during the cleanup due to acute radiation poisoning, and hundreds of others developed radiation-linked cancers from handling the incredibly dangerous waste. This includes all sorts of radiated equipment, soil, and plutonium laced chunks of concrete and metal. One particular isotope of plutonium housed inside of the tomb, plutonium 239, has a half life of 24,100 years. God damn. Meaning that for the material to even lose half of its radioactivity, it will literally take 24,100 years. But what's even worse is that during the construction, the government. I like to think in few centuries or even a thousand or let's say two, three thousand years. We'll be, we'll have resources in advance enough that we could just put all this nuclear waste into a rocket and throw it into the sun or something. We don't have to wait 24,000 years. The government failed to build a concrete lining underneath the dome and instead just relied upon the existing Sand. crater itself. And, as a result, seawater has slowly begun seeping into the tomb from the Pacific Ocean that surrounds it. 
and after it seeps in, it'll leak back out and take radioactive waste with it into the Pacific. What? And now, the local Marshallese are left with a decades-old decaying structure and the responsibility of maintaining it, all the while worried about the future of what was once pristine waters. It's even more alarming though. How is America making this level of incompetence mistakes? Don't they know this happening? What the hell? Well, then nobody's doing anything about this? This is massive fuck up, man. When you remember that the world's climate is changing rapidly and that the ocean sea levels are rising and the Marshall Islands in particular are facing a graver threat from this than most other places are. In fact, since 1993, the sea levels within the Marshall Islands region have risen by about 0.3 inches per year. And based upon forecasted sea levels, this could end up reaching up to four or five additional Feet by the end of this century alone. That's within most of our lifetimes, and this would effectively submerge most of these islands for good, as well as the tomb itself. Potentially even collapsing the dome and releasing all of that incredible amount- That is in most of a lifetime, really? You're gonna live 80 plus years more? That's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? But yeah. Okay, this is effed up. This could screw up all islands around this too, right? I'm pretty sure this could reach the uh, island of Samoa too, right? I'm pretty sure it would. Damn, this is effed up. Out of radioactive waste inside. All this waste and could today, leak the everywhere. The is already somewhat bobbing up and down with the tides. It could present itself as a complete disaster scenario. Today already, thousands of dead fish are washing up on the shore on a regular basis Damn. due to the terrible radioactive waste that is already leaking out into the surrounding water. The nuclear tomb on Runnet Island has the potential to become one of the 21st century's greatest nuclear disasters. So, you may be asking, what's being done about all of this? Well, fortunately, there is actually some progress that can be reported. In there 2020, for instance, the National Defense Authorization Act, or the U.S. bill that funds the U.S. military each year, provided a directive for the Department of Energy, which is the department in charge of the United States nuclear arsenal, to write a report on the status of the Runnet Dome. In that report, they determined that it's not in any immediate danger of collapse or failure, but it remains to be seen if that will continue to be true over the next several decades, especially as sea level rise high enough to potentially submerge the dome entirely. As far as the Marshallese are concerned, however, much of the Marshall Islands are already uninhabitable now due to the large radioactive hazard in the region. In fact, many of the recent tests show that some of the islands are still even more radioactive than Chernobyl is. Of the 40 or so primary islands in the atoll where Runnet is located, only three have been confirmed safe for human habitation, which are currently only home to around 650 residents today. The What's wrong with these people? 650? That's the large number you could move? Just move! You're way too close to this shit. I would not live there. Seriously. I mean, people might say it's not easy to just pack up and go. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's definitely is. If shit like this is close to you, yeah, just pack up and go somewhere else. Unfortunate fact is that I mean, are, are they American citizens like, uh, you know, other islands are? If they are, they could just move to USA, I guess. The Marshallese don't have the capability or the funding to deal with this issue alone and instead are completely reliant upon America's willingness to clean up the mess that they left for good. To date, the Nuclear Claims Tribunal, an independent ruling body with the authority to arbitrate legal relations between the United States and the Marshall Islands, has awarded the islanders $2 billion in damages. However, to date, only 4 million of that amount has ever actually been paid out. Right now, it what remains to be other? seen whether a more permanent solution to holding in the waste... As soon as I heard that, yeah, that's about right, isn't it? Just, you know, give them money, here you go, your radioactive waste all around you, you might get screwed, your DNA might get screwed by his some money. And even that, they just paid 4 million. ...will come about. Or if this really will end up becoming the world's next great nuclear disaster in the making. Whatever the future might hold for the fate of the dome on Runnet Island, it takes time in order to learn how to solve or overcome any challenge. Just over five years ago now, I created real life lore without a single shred of knowledge in animation, editing, or even audio recording. I quite literally had no idea what I was doing, and I've learned over the years simply through trial and error and continuous learning. If you're looking to get started creating your own videos here on YouTube, whatever the genre, the good news is that just like me, you don't need any prior experience. Yeah, people, go to skillsite.com for us real life lore 03211 and support this channel. Really? He started with no knowledge? In just five years, four million. That's good, man. He really did good here. 
Yeah, so when he said uh, America's Chernobyl, I'm like, is this a power plant disaster or something? But no, he's talking about nuclear waste. I didn't know they stored that much there. That's just effed up. I'm pretty sure if the waste leaks into the Pacific uh, Ocean, it could, you know, go all the way to, I guess, uh, American Samoa and everywhere too. I don't know. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. But yeah, that could be dangerous, man. Alright, people, if you like Merrickson, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the Rick Sunday. There's a link in the description. Check out the Cast World playlist. Check out the end card. And yeah, I'll see you next time.